How many shoes have you bought in your life? Yeah, probably a couple. But how many of those shoes that you bought were from Nike? Hello, bookquesters. It is I, Aaron, the bookquester. Today, I have this extremely interesting book, Shoe Dog Young Readers Edition by Phil Knight himself, a memoir by the creator of Nike. And well, let's get right on to it. So, let's talk about this. Phil Knight is, as we all know and love, the creator of Nike. And to, for me, I have so many Nikes. Some I've grown out of, and some I wear right at this moment of time. But, but, Nike didn't really start out as a billionaire company. No, that's not how it worked. When Nike first started, well, not Nike, it had a different name then, what Phil Knight first started wasn't anything like that. And well, let's get right on to that story. So, 10 years later after Phil Knight graduated high school, well, when he was in high school, he was in track. He loved running, and yeah, he just loved running. At that point of time, running wasn't really a sport, but he loved to run track, and he had a really good coach who was really encouraging and also really scary. All sports coaches are slightly like that. And then he had a crazy idea. That happened to be his high school report, and his idea was to export shoes from Japan. Because back then, shoes made from Japan was really, really cheap, but also pretty good in quality. And back then, only Puma, Adidas, Puma and Adidas basically just dominated the US shoes thing. So maybe a little new stuff could do some good. So what did he do? He traveled to Japan on a plane and got these shoes called Onitsuka Tigers. They're a Japanese brand, and actually, they make pretty good shoes to this day. In fact, my mom and dad loves those shoes. Pretty cool. And then, he decided to be the representative of Onitsuka Tiger in the US. And he sold out the shoes as quick as heck, and he started to absorb Japanese culture. He loved to talk about Zen, I mean Zen of peace. I mean, I've lived in Japan for three, four years, so yeah, I kind of understand all that. And he loved the holiness and the peace, and he liked like the Japanese culture, and he absorbed a lot. And well, I have to take notes on this, Jesus Christ. And then he does a lot of boring stuff, including um, selling stuff, um, loaning from a bank. And then making profits, all of that, money, money, money. And well, I, if you read this book, you can kind of tell like the adult world is just dominated by, you know, money, money, money. It's all about money, basically. <laughs> yeah, the adult life and sad. Anyway, and that's pretty much it. And he also had his first few full time employees, including his old friend some old friends and some trackers, and he made a little rap tag gang of a company, and he called it Blue Ribbon, so that, well, they were representing Onitsuka Tiger. And they kind of just kind of sold out quicker than quick, which was absolutely crazy. Well, then he met, there's some boring stuff about how he met his wife while he was trying to teach at a college, because he graduated Stanford. And he decided to risk everything and sell shoes. Respectable man. And yeah, he took risks and he always thought that he was gonna make a mark in this world whether or not his father or anyone disapproved or approved of it. It didn't matter. And he would do whatever it takes to do it. For him, leaving money around to be saved was useless. If he got, if he spent five thousand dollars on Onitsuka Tigers, sold them out for ten thousand dollars, perhaps he would use those ten thousand dollars, not leaving a cent except the little things that he needed, perhaps to pay his rent or eat. The rest of it all went to buy more Onitsuka Tigers to make a twenty thousand dollar profit. 
then he would use 90, 95% of that $20,000 $20, to buy only Nitsuka Tigers, and he'll do that all over again until it was over. And he would make that risk, and he was ready to do it. Well, fast forwarding a little bit to basically almost there in the book, he finds out that there is a spy. There is a spy. I mean, not, not a spy. There is a... Basically, Onitsuka Tiger, they had promised their contract that they would do this for another three years. You know, Onitsuka providing the shoes and Phil selling them, Phil Knight selling them. Yeah, they decided to destroy that contract because they think that they, which Blue Ribbon and Phil Knight, has not been doing enough to sell Onitsuka Tiger, which is absolutely ridiculous because they have been doubling their income for the past couple of years. And basically, Onitsuka Tiger wasn't sat um, satisfied with it. They hated them. End of story. So, Phil Knight pulled his own Uno reverse card. He started his own company. What he did, he rented a couple factories in Japan really, really cheaply. And he got some shoes, not as good quality as Onitsuka, but damn cheap. And he sold them out, sold them out. And then, finally, at the very end of the bug, he made Nike, which was absolutely amazing. Did you know that Nike could have been either called Falcon or Dimension 6? In fact, Phil Knight hated the name Nike. He didn't even consider it. What happened? Well, one of the full-time employees said that that full-time employee had a dream. And that employee had a dream, and in his dream, he heard the name Nike. Now, Nike is the Greek slash Roman goddess of victory. I mean, the Greek goddess of victory. Anyway, Nike means victory, and, uh, and they had literally three minutes left to choose the company's name. And she just didn't like Falcon, and every single one of his employees was saying that Dimension 6 sucks, and basically it wasn't just catchy enough. So Phil Knight decided, well, let's go with Nike, that no one agreed on. And he did it, sold out, and look at the logo. If we think about it, it looks like a V. It looks like a V, but it looks like it's in motion. Funny, funny thing, this logo was made B. Four, they named their country Nike. I mean, their company Nike. Yeah, the logo was made before the name. How peculiar. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, because there's so much of Phil's, Phil Knight's life described within a couple hundred pages, it's just so packed with information. I couldn't possibly go through all of it, even if I had 20 years. And basically what I felt about this book, it was definitely inspiring. It inspired me like, I gotta do something. This man grew from nothing to a millionaire. And I felt like, well, anyone can do that if they knew take, to take the right risk at the right time with the right people. And he probably wouldn't have gotten there without borrowing $50 from their dad, from his dad. So that's pretty cool. And Phil Knight, yeah, okay. And it's also, he just teaches us to be super risky, like, spend it all, use it all, leave a mark on the world, or don't. That's his very extreme black and white kind of feeling that I get from this book. And he seems to be a really hardworking guy, and he doesn't rest if he has to do something, and he never gives up. He just never gives up. Even when a big country like Onitsuka literally sues them, for going against their contract, even though Onitsuka betrayed them first, he doesn't give in. And guess what? They won the lawsuit and Onitsuka backed off. And yeah, that is pretty much my review of the Shoe Doc, Young Reader's Edition or whatever. It was an epic book to read. I mean, I don't know, it was just filled with humor and wit and his own philosophies, Phil Knight's own philosophies, that we could learn a couple things from it. And yeah, like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester, goodbye. Read some books. Definitely read this one. This is really interesting. Of course, I said it, some parts are boring. Well, you know, money, 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 and all the numbers.